Good morning. Happy Friday. I have NeuroCoffee in hand and it is perfect. Okay. So kind of a subdued day on this date. Um, I think it's important that we continue to remember those that gave the ultimate sacrifice. So please do so. But I would also say let's take this opportunity to thank those that continue to sacrifice for us. So thank your public service, or servants rather. Um, we got a, a, a fair amount at, at IFAST, and so we will take that opportunity to thank them today. Um, now, having said that, let's move on. We got a really solid Q&A to wrap up the week. In fact, I'm gonna kinda combine two questions here. One that's a little vague and one that's a little bit more specific that will help us answer the first question. So the first question comes from Austin. Austin says, hi, Bill, I love your work. Well, thank you so much, Austin, I appreciate that. I was wondering, when I do heavy bench presses and weighted pull-ups, my shoulders hurt, what do you think that is? Thanks a lot. Well, I was kind of limited in the amount of information that you're providing for me there, Austin, but thankfully Johnny came through with a, a second question uh, this week that I think might help us um, come up with a, at least a reasoning behind why you might be feeling these, these uh, uh, shoulders the way you are. So Johnny says, if someone cannot get their humerus past 90 degrees while maintaining external rotation, is this an issue of not being able to expand anterior, posterior, or both sides of the thorax since this would be within the internal rotation portion of, of shoulder flexion? Also, why might someone abduct the humerus while moving through flexion? Okay, so a couple things. First things first, let's go through a little bit of, of understanding in regard to how this shoulder moves as it moves through flexion um, as, and as we talk about internal and external rotation. I'm gonna use the hip as the first example because we've talked about that a lot. And so I'll show you. So as we move through this early phase of hip flexion, that would be an external rotation bias as we move through the middle range. So the sticking point area, uh, the, this highly propulsive area is gonna be internal rotation and then we're gonna finish with external rotation. Now, the cool thing about this is, is that the shoulder really isn't all that different. So if we take the shoulder and we look at the same representation, so I got my scapula on my shoulder here, in this early phase of shoulder flexion, I'm gonna look at external rotation bias as I move through this middle range, so from 90 degrees plus or minus 30, I'm gonna be looking at an internal rotation bias. This is where my highest force producing capabilities are. And then as I finish with flexion again, I'm gonna to move towards external rotation. So I would encourage you to go to the YouTube channel and go through um, a couple of videos. So there's one on how to measure shoulder flexion a little bit more effectively. There's some self-testing that includes a shoulder flexion test um, that, that will be very, very useful. And then last week, I think I posted an encore video in regard to shoulder impingement that will also be very, very useful. Now, to go to Johnny's question in regard, is this an anterior or posterior compressive issue? So if we're looking at this early phase of shoulder flexion, so about zero to 60 degrees, we're gonna be looking at, at the influence of expansion and compression, this posterior lower aspect of the thorax. So reason being, if this area is compressed, I will lose my ability to maintain external rotation of the humerus as I move towards flexion. So if we want to pick up, pick on a muscle, if we want to pick on muscles, we'll just say, okay, if I've got a lat that, that is compressing that, that posterior lower thorax, what it's going to try to do as I try to, try to move this shoulder uh, away from, from my side or move the upper extremity away from my side, it's going to cause the humerus to want to turn inward, right? Now, a typical compensatory strategy for this would be for somebody to turn away from that side as a substitution, and therefore I can sort of maintain my humerus in this externally rotated orientation. Um, typically what you're gonna see in the gym is you're gonna see somebody that, that's going to increase their, their arch of their lower back because the, what would be considered traditional extension is actually um, an internally rotated position of the spine. And so again, that's what you're typically gonna see. That's why you're gonna see an, an arch in a bench press or you're gonna see um, the arch in a pull up um, because this is a substitution um, for a lack of shoulder motion that's created by this compressive strategy of latissimus dorsi against the, the uh, posterior lower rib cage. So again, is, this is not a bad thing. It's great for uh, compressive strategies. It's great for force production. So it is a necessary, 
evil of the exercise. I think we have to be sure of this, that it doesn't become interference. Now, as the shoulder moves farther into uh, what would be considered traditional flexion, I have to move into internal rotation. So it's an internal rotation bias. But if I'm doing something that I would consider like a bench press, where I have concentric orientation of pecs, I'm gonna have a compressor strategy anteriorly under this circumstance. And so I'm gonna lose that internal rotation that I need to get through that, that element of, of shoulder flexion. Typically what you're gonna see under those circumstances is I'll see a shrugging motion as a substitution, or again, I'm gonna move away from midline. So I'm gonna move my, my humerus away from midline, much like we do with the femur when we're trying to squat, when we don't have access to internal rotation, we're gonna deviate the knee laterally because that's gonna allow us to move towards a position that is more uh, externally rotation biased, and then from there we can internally rotate again. So the humerus is no different. So as I elevate to here, Johnny, the reason that I would deviate laterally is because I'm trying to move towards external rotation, which is in that horizontal abduction plane. And from there, I will be able to access more internal rotation. So now, Johnny, we've answered your question. Okay, let's go back to Austin's problem. So Austin, um, for you to move through uh, the active ranges of motion associated with the bench press and, and your pull-ups, you're going to need an element of external rotation. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to move because you're going to be using uh, a propulsive internal rotation, exhalation, compressive-based strategy to try to move through those ranges of motion. So if you lose the ability to externally rotate the humerus due to the posterior compression that we saw um, in the back of the rib cage here, or you lose internal rotation on the, the anterior aspect, now you're compressed on both sides. So now all you have is a compressive strategy in the shoulder. So you're starting your shoulder range of motion from an internally rotated position. You're gonna have to move through the excursion where internal rotation demand increases. And so you're gonna end up with a lot of compressive strategy as you're trying to move that shoulder through through any arc of a range of motion. And so now you're just dealing with what would uh, commonly be called impingement. Um, I would refer to it as just, just a, a, a compressive strategy that is gonna end up potentially resulting in a, in a pain experience. But because you don't have any compensatory external rotation strategies available to you, you're stuck in IR, you live in IR, and you're trying to move in IR. So, um, Johnny, I hope that answers the question for you. Austin, um, you need to work on getting some anterior posterior expansion back into that, that thorax, and that should help you alleviate a great portion of those compressive strategies that are giving you the discomfort. Everybody have a great Friday. Um, Remember to listen to the podcast on Sunday so you get the whole week in review. And then I'll see you guys next week.